video the one nutrient that actually saves kidneys or destroys them and how to get it right Catherine here I'm a doctor of natural medicine and if there is one thing I learned from working with CKD patients my whole career it is that the focus must be on what gets you results quick think about it my patients they want to see their GFR improved at their next lab test. Not in one year, not in six months, now. And there is only one way to do that. The renal diet. And of course, the renal diet is all about controlling protein intake. But here is a fact about the renal diet not a lot of people know. It's not just the amount of protein that matters. The quality of protein you eat can make the difference between healing your kidneys and triggering dialysis. It's true. I've seen this happen with my own eyes. I have patients who were able to stay off dialysis for years just by following a renal diet. And I have patients who got their creatinine back to normal just by reducing their protein intake. A little bit and on the opposite end of the curve i've met patients who were tricked by internet misinformation into starting a carnivore or a keto diet and that sent them straight into dialysis so here's the point the amount and the quality of the protein you eat can literally make or destroy your kidney health Today, we are going to see the easiest way to turn protein from your worst enemy to your best friend. To do that, let's talk about high quality protein. Because here's the thing, for patients in the early stages and for those on dialysis, having high quality protein is incredibly helpful. But I'm not talking about eating steak and bacon here. I'm talking about actually healthy foods plant-based foods because unlike meat the foods on this table won't literally destroy the molecular structure of your kidneys but just like meat they do provide complete protein let's take the example of soy foods you know tofu edamame natto that stuff is amazing for kidney health and it's exactly the type of protein source you want in your diet and this is not just my opinion. Several studies conducted on CKD patients are proving this. This review, for example, it wasn't even trying to prove that soy protects the kidneys because as you can see, we already know that, all right? No need to prove it again. The goal of this study, understanding how much soy you need to eat to improve your kidney health. And that's a big difference in medical science, if you ask me. Anyway, the study was done to see if replacing all of your protein with soy would make a difference. And yes, it did. But replacing everything is hard. It's not really something a CKD patient can do. However, the review proved that replacing just 35% of your protein with soy can make a huge difference in your GFR numbers. So consider including in your diet tofu, edamame, and of course, natto. Natto in particular is a Japanese delicacy, a dish made from fermented soybeans. So yeah, this food, it's not just one of the best protein sources. It's also a probiotic food, making it a real kidney saver. But soy is not the only hero here. Let's talk about whole grains. The three whole grains you see here, quinoa, amaranth, and buckwheat, are very special. You see, unlike most plant-based foods, these three whole grains, quinoa, amaranth, and buckwheat, are a complete, high-quality protein source. Just like soy, they have significant amount of all the nine amino acids, including lysine, which is low in most plant-based foods. It is basically like saying you can get the benefits of eating meat but without the toxins that destroying your kidneys. So question, how often should you include these whole grains in your diet? If you have CKD, whole grains should be the basis of your food pyramid. 
Each and every meal you eat should include them. And while they shouldn't necessarily be this tree, they are very healthy. Quinoa is naturally gluten-free and it's also rich in fiber and antioxidants. Amaranth is very rich in magnesium, making it excellent for controlling high blood pressure. In buckwheat is an excellent iron and calcium source, great for the renal diet. And all of them are complete protein sources, which is, as I was saying, will give you all the health benefits of eating meat without actually having to eat meat. And let's talk about seeds. Many seeds have kidney protecting benefits, but when it comes to protein content, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, and hemp seeds are the best sources. All of them are complete protein sources, and all of them have huge health benefits. Chia seeds, for example, are one of the best omega-3 sources you can find. Always include them in small amounts in your diet. Now, pumpkin seeds are even more incredible. Here, researchers were able to prove that just by eating more pumpkin seeds, people were able to decrease their risk for calcium oxalate stones. It's incredible, especially because many people are still being told to avoid these seeds because they are rich in oxalate. And yet, science clearly proves that you should actually eat more pumpkin seeds to reduce your risk for kidney stones. In fact, pumpkin seeds are known to increase the excretion of phosphate, glycosaminoglycans, and potassium. These substances will naturally prevent kidney stones formation. Now, hemp seeds stand out here because they have literally the same amount of protein per 100 grams you get from meat. And it's also high quality protein, just like meat. So, of course, only eat hemp seeds in moderation and only if you actually need the extra protein. But it's clear that protein may help some patients. So, now you might ask, Catherine, why you go to these lengths? Why not just eat a grass-fed T-bone steak? Well guys, here's the thing. The foods I've shown you today, they are not something you add to your diet. They are something you use to replace the dangerous stuff. Let me explain. There has been a huge shift in how we manage protein. And while steak is still off the menu, sorry about that guys, we are now prescribing diets with a higher amount of protein to select patients. This huge study is strongly advocating for giving elderly patients with milder kidney disease more protein, at least compared to every other CKD patients. But here is the truth. Finding that sweet spot for protein, it can be a bit of a puzzle because everyone is unique. Your neighbor might need less protein, you might need more. And frankly, figuring out grams and percentages of yourself, it's not easy. But here is the good news. You don't have to figure it all out alone. I can help. I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations and I will turn all that confusing data into a simple plan. My patients, they don't have to wait the food they eat. All they have to measure is their GFR improvements. So imagine sitting down to dinner and knowing with 100% confidence that what you are eating is healing your kidneys, not damaging them. So if you are ready to make the renal diet easy, send me an email at katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com or click the link in the description. Let's get you on the path to better health together. Because now you might ask, but how much protein do I need exactly? Do I need more or do I need less? Well, guys, let's go a bit more in depth about this because here's something I've learned from working with CKD patients for many years. Having to recommend that a patient increase protein consumption is the exception, not the norm. Actually, the amount of patients I've met who were eating too little protein is tiny compared to those who were eating too much protein. Truth is, if you have CKD, cutting protein is the way to go, all right? Unless you are literally starving, of course. But for everyone else, you need less protein if you want to improve says science by the way as you can see so now the question is how do we include the foods we just saw in our diet safely well simply put you will need to remove protein from somewhere else this is one of the dogmas of the renal diet remove low quality protein add high quality protein less strain on the kidneys more protein for the body to use but where should you remove this low quality protein from? 
since you are hopefully not eating any meat, fish, dairy, the main source of low-quality protein in your diet is pasta, rice, bread, and other processed grains. Yes, despite what many people think, most foods that are usually considered just carb sources are actually also protein sources. And wheat flour is the perfect example of that. If you eat some pasta or bread or other staple foods made from wheat flour, you think you are only eating carbs, right? Wrong. You are eating a lot of protein as well. Actually, for each small serving of pasta or bread you are eating, you are getting up to 4 grams of protein, alright? And that's a problem. But we can solve it. How? With low protein staple foods. Remember that for most CKD patients, the goal is eating about 30 grams of protein per day. It's impossible to get enough calories if you eat bread and pasta and not overshoot that protein target. Unless you do some smart substitutions. One example is doing what the Italians do. You know, in Italy, they eat a lot of pasta, right? And to make sure CKD patients can eat pasta without overloading on protein, they also invented a protect pasta. And if you are not eating a protect pasta yet, pay attention to this. This pasta, it is an incredibly powerful tool. Replacing pasta with Aprotec pasta alone can save you from dialysis for years. It's true. And in Italy, the government is giving CKD patients Aprotec foods for free. But not out of the kindness of their heart, no. Just because they know they can save a bunch of money. In fact, in Italy, the government pays for your dialysis, all right? But they are smart. They don't want to pay. And the best way to avoid paying for dialysis is giving CKD patients a protect pasta so they don't end up in dialysis in the first place. But of course, if you live in the US, you are the one paying for dialysis. So they just tell you to eat a steak, whatever, it's fine. Now, if you don't live in Italy, you can still find a protect pasta and bread for sale, but they are pretty expensive. That's why I will share with you a super easy recipe to remove a lot of low quality protein from your diet that's also super cheap. Let's talk about cassava starch wrap. I love this recipe because while a protect white flour is pretty expensive, cassava starch is super cheap, but it doesn't have any protein and you can use it to make your own a protect bread. Yeah, this recipe is a real kidney saver. So take a screenshot now because this is also super easy to make. You just need to combine cassava flour, water, and oil in the quantities you see on screen to form a smooth dog, right? The key here is to use the right amount of water to achieve a soft, pliable consistency. When you are done, you roll the dog and put it on a skillet. Cook for about 1 to 2 minutes on the first side until air bubbles begin to form. Flip the wrap and cook for another 1 to 2 minutes on the second side until a few brown spots appear. Just don't overcook it or your wrap will become stiff. Now, you can use it instead of bread and remove a bunch of low quality protein from your diet. You can also try the recipe you see on screen right now if you want. Now guys, I have one more recipe to show you. I just want to clarify one thing before I show it to you. There is something really important I need to clarify. So, what you might ask now is, does this really make a difference? Well, here is the thing. There is no stopping kidney disease without cutting protein from the diet. So, if your goal is avoiding ending up in dialysis, cutting protein as much as possible should be your first priority. And the thing is, removing enough protein it's not as easy as avoiding steak and bacon. The recipe I just showed you, it's a lifesaver, but you need to eat it every day. It should be part of a diet that's 100% focused on avoiding protein. And there is a reason why I'm telling you this. Most new patients that I meet are coming from video like this one, right? Many of them are really trying to reduce protein intake because they know it works. They know it can make a difference. I've seen this countless times. I met a new patient and he tells me, Yeah, Catherine, I'm really trying to follow your advice on the diet, but I'm still eating some eggs or, you know, some chicken breast. They tell me. And why do you do that? I ask. But it's always the same answer. It's because they are worried because they think they will become malnourished if they don't eat enough protein. That they will lose muscle mass. 
So question, is reducing protein intake going to damage your health? Yes, most patients are worried that reducing protein intake will damage their health somehow or that they will become malnourished or lose muscle mass. And here is the thing, 999 out of 1000 CKD patients are getting way too much protein. And that's very important because with CKD, you are way more likely to become malnourished if you eat too much protein. Let that sink in for a moment. Malnutrition, the very issue you are trying to prevent by eating eggs and steak, you are literally causing it by eating too much protein. It's true, guys, and I will prove this to you. Because most CKD patients, they will see their serum protein improve when they cut protein from their diet, all right? Yes, you'd think that your serum protein, the amount of protein your body can use, will decrease when you cut protein, right? Well, the opposite is true. Your serum protein is almost always going to improve when you cut protein. So I get my patients started on a low protein diet and boom, their serum protein improves. That happens because eating less protein means less proteinuria. So you are not peeing as much protein out anymore. And this fact, it is proved by countless clinical trials. See the number of studies this review is citing? I mean, they are like... Oh, you want a source? Yeah, consult the references. Links from 70 to 75. Be yeah, guys, these researchers, they are even more pissed than me at people saying you need to eat steak to keep your muscle mass. I mean, for a researcher, giving you more than five sources for something like that is like giving you a middle finger. Seriously, it's almost a slap in their face. It's true. Ask any researcher you know. So here's my point. If anyone tells you that eating red meat is good for you, they are either lying, misinformed, dumb, or all of the above. Okay, as promised, one more recipe to cut, not just protein, but also calories from your diet. Let's talk about shirataki noodles. Because you see, these noodles, they are the holy grail of kidney health. I'm not kidding. Do you know what people with kidney disease need more of in their diet? fiber and do you know what these noodles are made of literal fiber these noodles they are a hundred percent just pure glucomannan a very special type of fiber this fiber it has so many benefits for people with advanced ckd it was studied as a way to decrease the accumulation of pig cresol sulfides and indole as we can read these are literally the toxins protein metabolism creates, all right? So if you use these noodles instead of regular pasta, you are not just, you know, removing the protein from that pasta dish you would have eaten. You are also helping your body getting rid of even more toxins from protein. Ah, did I mention that shirataki noodles are zero calories? Yeah, I know it's unbelievable, but it's true. These noodles are not just protein free, they are also carb and calorie free. You can literally eat as much of them as you want, especially if you prepare them like I've shown you in this recipe. And I know I mentioned this recipe in a previous video, but if you haven't tried it already, you are going to thank me for showing it again because shiradagi noodles taste amazing with kimchi, a Korean fermented cabbage recipe. And kimchi is chock full of bifidobacterium langum, a helpful probiotic like what you can find in my Renobiotic, the powerful renal probiotic supplement. And these bacteria, they literally feed on uremic toxins. Yeah, that's why when I created my probiotic supplement, I put bifidobacterium longum in it, all right? Because we know today that these bacteria will happily feast on those uremic toxins your kidneys are struggling with. So try this recipe and if you want more kidney saving tips, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all and happy new year. Bye.